Earlier this week, the triathlon world woke up to the biggest doping scandal in the sport's history. On March 27th, 2023, Colin Chartier was notified by the International Testing Agency that he had returned a positive out-of-competition drug test on February 10th, 2023 for the banned substance erythropoietin, more commonly known as EPO. Cycling, running and swimming have all had famous big-name doping cases come to light, but not triathlon. Triathlon fans have thus always believed their sport to be cleaner than other big endurance sports. That has all now changed. So who is Colin Chartier? Colin Chartier is an American long-course triathlete, most well-known for rising to prominence in 2022. He went from a relatively unknown athlete in the community, having good results without anything really big, to winning one of the sport's four biggest races on September 17th, 2022, the $1 million prize money PTO US Open. He also won Ironman Mont Tremblant the month before. These two results moved his world ranking from number 40 right up to number 11, a huge jump. Based on these results, he also went from making very small amounts of money from race results to becoming one of the highest earning triathletes in the world that year. Colin's race at the PTO US Open was easily one of the best performances in the sport last year. The US Open was raced in Dallas, Texas, in 100 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, which made it one of the most brutal conditions of any race last year. Colin had an all-round good day, coming off the bike in fifth place, only one minute off the lead, and ran through the four athletes in front of him. He looked smooth, in control, and like he was handling the extreme conditions far better than anyone else in the race to take the win. Colin's main training partner at the time, Lionel Sanders, who finished over 10 minutes behind Chartier in 21st place, told the world how insane Colin is in the heat. He spoke of doing training sessions in the heat with Colin that absolutely destroyed him just to hold on. This praise from Sanders on Chartier's ability to race well in extremely hot conditions, combined with his result at the PTO US Open, made us in the triathlon community believe this race must have suited Colin perfectly and led to him achieving the best result of his career. Following his race at the PTO US Open, Colin Chartier joined his training group of Lionel Sanders and Rudy Von Berg, as well as head coach Mick Aliden on the Big Island of Hawaii to prepare for the Ironman World Championships on October 17th. At the start of the year, Colin was on no one's radar to win the Ironman World Championships, but he was now one of the big pre-race favourites based on his ability to race so well in hot conditions. And the Ironman World Championships in Kona are known for their brutally hot conditions. The short training camp that Colin, Lionel and their coach Mikael Eden undertook leading into the Ironman World Championships was one of the most closely followed things in triathlon in 2022. This was because it was documented by triathlon YouTuber Talbot Cox on Lionel Sanders' YouTube channel. It was a 10-part series taking viewers inside the brutal training the group was completing on the island in the short turnaround time between the PTO US Open and the Ironman World Championships. Following this, Colin's popularity and status in triathlon went again to another level, where only a couple of months ago, Colin was a relatively unknown part of the triathlon community. He was now one of the sport's bigger names. Things, however, did not pan out for Colin at the Ironman World Championships, and he finished in 35th place, almost one hour behind the winner, Gustav Eden. Colin has talked extensively since about overdoing things in the lead-up and entering that race with niggling injuries and being extremely fatigued from his preparations. As it turned out, Kona would be Colin Chartier's last race in triathlon. After Kona, Colin took his off-season and enjoyed some downtime to finish 2022 before beginning his 2023 season with back-to-back altitude camps, the first one in Mammoth Lakes, California, and the second in Ecuador. Following this, Colin would spend his time training between Boulder, Colorado, and Spain in preparation for his first two big races of the year, Ironman Texas and the PTO European Open in Ibiza. During this time, I got to know Colin really well, as he was part of a podcast series I created on how they train called Road to the PTO European Open, where he and fellow professional triathletes Frederick Funk and Mika Newt would come on each week for 12 weeks leading into the race and talk about their weekly training. However, with over five weeks to go in the series, Colin's last episode of the series would come on March 30th, three days after he was notified of his positive drug test, when a persistent back injury forced him to accept he would not be racing either Ironman Texas or the PTO European Open. And that brings us to this week, where the news broke that Colin Chartier had tested positive for EPO. As a consequence, Colin was handed a three-year ban from racing. Colin was quick to get on the front foot and came out to do an exclusive podcast, again on how they train, the day this news came to light, where he spoke in detail about his drug use. Colin told the world that he had begun his EPO use on November 16th, 2022, 
due to a pressure he had placed upon himself to take his performance to another level in 2023. Colin had been feeling the pressure of injury, periods of inconsistency in training and being stuck in a negative, bordering on depressed emotional state that led him to making the decision to take EPO to achieve what he wanted to achieve. Colin stated in the podcast that he had acted alone, purchasing the EPO online and learning how to self-administer through online guidance. When asked if he was using modern, unknown techniques, Colin shared that he was copying how Lance Armstrong and those in the early 2000s were doing it, microdosing three to four times a week in small amounts intravenously. Colin also revealed that he would not be coming back to racing following his three-year ban and that he had decided to retire from the sport. He cited that his drug use was symptomatic of his loss of enjoyment for training and the lifestyle required to be a professional long-course triathlete. Despite insisting that his EPO use began after his major race results and following his poor performance in Kona, Colin did share with us that he had been walking a fine line and dabbling in a grey area of human performance for quite some time by self-administering a substance called L-cartanine. L-cartanine is an amino acid derivative that helps the body turn fat into energy and is somewhat commonly used in society as a weight loss supplement. And while not a banned substance, nor a substance that gives you anywhere close to the performance benefit of EPO, I think this speaks to Colin already holding the mindset of being willing to do things outside of the norm to get the most out of his performance. Triathlon has had smaller, more unknown names banned for drug use in the past, but Colin Chartier is the first truly big name to test positive and be banned from the sport. That's why this is such a big deal. But if you ask anyone in the triathlon community, they will always tell you that whilst acknowledging some people may look for shortcuts through doping, they believe the sport to be largely clean and that it is possible to win big races and world championship level races as a clean athlete. Therefore, this shock revelation of Colin Chartier's positive drug test brings to question, is Colin one of these bad apples? Did he really act alone? Or is the sport once thought of as innocent and largely clean when compared to its bigger endurance sport brothers like cycling and running, actually hiding its own dark secrets, both past and present, and that Colin Chartier testing positive is only scraping the surface of a much, much bigger problem. 